Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're talking about the new Pietro Grinder. So today we have a robust video, and I've got time cues below to help you traverse throughout so you don't have to sit and watch all of it if that's not what you're into, because I do get into the weeds on a lot of this, especially considering my part in this grinder. But first I'm gonna ask that you hit the like, the subscribe, uh, check out my Patreon and different things that really help support my channel. Let's get into the disclaimer. I helped with this grinder. Sort of. There are certain aspects that have my fingerprints all over it. One of them being the base that is about to be released, and another being the M modal burr set, or the Pro Brew set, or the Lance Burrs. Th these are all the same grinder, but one has their M modal burr set, and one has their B modal. One is more filter focused, and the other kind of multi purpose. With the brewing burr set, I essentially created those. I'll get more into my involvement later in this video, but I wanted to start off by just saying technically, the better that the Pro Brew burr set, that does, I get a kickback from that. So it is advantageous for me for those to do well. That being said, my authenticity is my brand. And so I'm not here to just push this grinder on you. I'm gonna be doing as many objective tests in this video. I'm gonna show you the quirks of this grinder and I'm gonna show you the benefits of this grinder. Let's break this grinder down. And this is kind of the final production unit right here. Out of the box, I don't really like that much because it's a little difficult to grind. If you're doing espresso on here or using really light, really roasted coffees, it can kind of teeter a lot. Now, they used a, a famous kind of product designer to help create this, and it's won, it won the Red Dot Design Award, which is a, is a big thing, and I, I do think the shape is lovely, and it looks really good, but it is large and it is top heavy. So the weight is... 1.5 kilo, 1569 grams, all right? So that's quite a robust grinder. And for comparison's sake, the J Max from Easy Presso is 787. So it's literally double the weight of, a, I guess, a typical grinder. So when you're grinding, it kind of goes around like this. So you kind of push, you gotta put a decent amount of pressure right here in order to grind it well. And this was one of the first things I pointed out is we need some sort of stability, some sort of base, which this is where the base comes in. There is a hack though, if you don't wanna get the base or if you don't have the base and you already have this grinder, you put it right here and you hold it, it slows the feed rate down going into the burrs, which can actually help with your particle distribution. A slower feed rate can kind of help that. And so I kind of just sit here and do this. Uncle Lance, I don't got a gut like you, my man. This is the same thing when you're fishing for big old fish, the big old ones in deep sea fishing. You've got that harness on, you put the, the fishing pole right there and you're using your back like this, Ugh. all right? That's the, that's the hack, that's the way to do it. And it makes it a lot easier. Your belly kind of absorbs the vibrations, you're good to go. Taking a look at the base, we take this bottom off and you just put it right up in this base like so. Boop. And then you take the top and boop. So it's flat against the edge of the table. And then I just hold at the back of, uh, at the back of the chamber right here. I just hold it and boom, then it's super easy. I can just like magic. Most people are probably gonna use this to go to, to stay at home with, so it can kind of just sit on your coffee bar and it doesn't really take away or negate from the aesthetic of it. It looks nice and it's thin, it's narrow. Now this one is a 3D printed prototype, so this is not the final version. The final version will be a little bit more robust than this, but you, you get the idea. It does the job really well and it's made grinding a lot, a lot easier, a lot easier. I've been putting in a Pollen's Gold, some really lightly roasted Ethiopia coffees. I just kind of like lean on it like I'm a cool guy, like James Dean. This is also the Pro Brew Burr, so this is even gonna be harder because it has a more aggressive feed rate. But then we're just gonna grab it. Oh, I got a feeling, I might am believing that you're in love with me. Oh, I moved on a feeling. So this is what happens when you don't have the bass. It's really not that bad. I may have overstated it a bit, but it does make it a lot easier to hold it here, and then you're good to go. And there it is all done. And so you can see how finely I ground that. We got Professor Klump over here. This one, I've done some stuff to, like taken it apart and, and messed with a lot, so it's a little ugly on the inside, but we're, I'm gonna kinda show you what's going on. In order to take the burr set off, all you have to do is put, you gotta get the handle straight down perpendicular to the ground. You push the handle in, and you just rotate. 
and here it comes. Boom. All right. So this is the Pro Brewing set that I helped create. This is not DLC coded. The final uh, production version is DLC coded, which I'll show in a second. So this is how you take the burr set out. And then to get the rotary burr out, you literally just pull. So these bearings are really t have a really tight tolerance to the chamber back there. So when you put it in, you got to kind of like wiggle it a bit, make sure it's, there it goes, back in. So it comes out pretty easily. And you see the ball bearings right there. So typically this sits right down here like that, and you have two magnets on the side for the catch cup. Now there's a screw here that I took out, so we can take that off, because I'm gonna show you something with this in a second. And then you can also take this screw out, and you can take this plastic um, hopper out. There's no real need to right now, because it doesn't really show anything underneath, but just so you know, that is there. Now the way that the dial works, it clicks like this, and supposedly every click is 15 microns. I am not a big fan of clicks in general. What is that strange ticking noise? Snape, Snape, Severus Snape, Dumbledore. It starts at zero and then it goes all the way back around to zero, like so. And now there is something that stops you from getting past. So like on this one, you can't go past zero. And then when you come all the way around, you can't get past right here. There's something blocking you. Well, what's blocking you is this little guy. Okay, this little guy goes right up in here. We put it up in there and now boom, it's stopping me. So a simple modification I did, I took a Dremel tool and I just, I don't recommend doing that. If you want to take this part off in order to get to, for instance, the little thing that makes the ticks, all you have to do is you unscrew this all the way off and this is what changes the grind size. So there's threading on the outside right here and it goes around this. That's the bearing of our burr. This, as you keep going finer and finer, it pushes it forward more and more. You see that little pin? That's what makes the tick, tick, tick noise and it does it onto this ribbed part. All you gotta do uh, if you want it to be stepless is you just take a pair of pliers. You don't even have to have pliers. Honestly, you can just do that and it falls right on out. And then there's no more ticks. I've not found any drifting at all. Keep the pin if you do take it out. Keep it in case you do need to replace it for some reason. But Lance, but Lance, how do you take the burrs off? It seems impossible because they're blind. There are no screw holes. How do you do it? Come on, let Uncle Lance let you down. <laughs> no, I would not. All you gotta do to take these out, it's very simple. You see this hole right by the button? We're gonna feed in the properly sized hex gear Allen wrench. We're gonna feed it through the hole right into the screw, but then we're just gonna unscrew it. The screw came out. There it is. Then we're gonna turn it all the way around because we have to feed it through this hole. So there we have one of the burrs. So that's how you take off the first one. Very easy, very straightforward. Two screw holes on the back. Now to take the other one off, all you gotta do is first, we're gonna take a wrench with the proper size and we're just gonna loosen this like so. And then look what we have there. So we're gonna take the same size one. We're gonna put it right there. We're just gonna loosen it. So now we've taken off the bearing itself. And there we have the burr. Let's say you get the Pietro with the Pro Brew burrs, which if you're gonna get one, that's the one to get. Wink, wink. If you get it and you buy the multi-purpose burrs, it will come housed in this casing so that it's easy swap out, all right? So that's, that's as easy as it is. So in order to put it back together, we're just gonna line this back up on the bearing, make sure it's all clean. You don't want anything on this. We're gonna put this back on, drop the little screws in, put the plate back on, screw this back in. And we have this back to all together. Then for this, very simply, you always wanna clean off burr carriers. Always, always, always. They can cause misalignment. I'm gonna go ahead and feed the other screw through the hole. So then we just line these up with the holes, put it like so, this right through, and there we are. Switch to the other side. So you line up the hole into that, then you're gonna angle it at about 10 or so o'clock. You push it in, just like so, and you just rotate back to place. Let go of the button, and you're back to good. Easy peasy. And now is a quick break so that we can talk about our sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is an incredible tool for all of us out there who are creators that want to put something out into the world, whether it's a blog, whether it's art, whether it's me being a crazy person online with YouTube, growing my hair long, cutting it off, growing a mustache, cutting it off, etc. It's very intuitive. It's easy for a schlub like me to go through, click, 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 click. You just click, you just point and click, and that's what you edit. It's very easy. And that's how I built a beautiful website. Bada bing, bada boom. When you're ready to launch it, you can go down to the link in the caption below, which is www.squarespace.com slash Lance Hedrick. Make sure you spell my last name correctly or the boogeyman will come get you. You can also post on there links to your social media so there's a little liaison between the two. Hello, I'm social media. Hello, I'm your Squarespace website. Bada bing. You can set up a store there and it's very easy. I know you're thinking, oh, but Lance, you know everything about coffee. You're so brilliant. How do you not know something about something? Well, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but I don't know Jack Diddley squad about things online. So I love something that's intuitive like Squarespace. Use my code below and and uh, let's continue on with this video. Now I know questions that'll arise are what about alignment? What about alignment? Then I've also heard someone uh, say that they have bird 
touching if they rotate hard versus rotating soft. What I want to point out about that is this is built with pretty tight tolerances and, are, and is built in a way so that everything lines up really well. All the units that we've tested particle distribution on are all very consistent regardless because of the way that it is built. Now, to address the concern about whether you're going hard and at an angle and the burr rubs at, uh, at different areas based off of the force you're putting on the lever, I can understand the fear here, but what you have to remember is that is when there's no beans in there. When there's beans inside, even if it is like this because of the force you're putting on the lever, the beans force it back out so that they're more parallel because the beans one is easy as a path out. So for the burrs to be more parallel, that's, that's what happens. So even if you push inside and you make it chirp at a number higher than it normally would be, when the beans are in, it's not doing that. And again, this is all proven through our particle size distribution testing. It's similar to um, how when you have an affixed cone burr and a hand grinder, if it's aligned in factory like at Kinu, even if you don't have a perfect uh, lock to touch, like if someone has a, a tighter lock to touch, it doesn't matter because it's aligned to that axle and because the axle is aligned and because the axle is uh, taut in there, and it's perfectly perpendicular, when the beans go through against that cone, it shoves it into a center piece so that all the, the grounds uh, come out as evenly as possible. Now, something that can be a pain is if you're using really lightly roasted coffee and you're in a drier area, there can be a decent amount of retention in the chamber if you don't. So the bottom has a pad on it so that you can tap when you're done. What it will do is it will separate a lot of the chaff and the chaff will want to stay up. I actually don't tap very much because I like the chaff to be separated and because it's so simple to pull off, I just take my vacuum, put it right in there, suck it out and I'm good to go. But I know for a lot of people, they want the zero retention, which is absolutely fine. Just give it a few taps like that, maybe throw the handle one more time and you'll get the rest down there. If you want to RDT, you can. I don't think you need to. I prefer not because I like the chaff being removed. I think it gives a cleaner cup. This is the new one, and I've already done the stepless mod and the infinite grind mod. Now, there's only so far it can go on coarse grinding, so like going past is not really gonna do that much, but I just, I, I don't like being told what to do, so I don't like that little stick being there, because it's like it's telling me what to do, and I'm like, dude, screw off, you're not telling me what to do. So I take that off, and if I wanna go past zero, I can. It is what it is. There's one other piece that you can get now. It's a pouring funnel. This is something I asked of them. I said, pouring out of this is not very fun because of the way it is. You have to have this loop so that the handle fits in snugly right there. And so when you're pouring out from there, it, it comes out all messy. If you pour out from the back because it's so flat and wide, it comes out messy. So essentially you need to pour from a, a corner. And I just don't like the feel of that. So they made this which fits and seals that front hole perfectly, and then you dump it out, it's super easy. And because of the material on the inside, coffee grounds don't really remain in there. It also fits a 58 uh, millimeter portafilter. Boom, it goes in just like that. It can go inside your funnel itself. Pretty much fits a Cremina portafilter. It's a little tight, but it does fit in there if that's what you're wanting. It is all plastic, so it's, you know, it is what it is, but, um, or you don't have to use it if you get it. The body is made out of aluminum, which you can see when you open it up from the inside. So once more, we'll open up from the inside, and you can see the aluminum housing right there, aluminum on the bur burr carrier right there. Uh, and, and because it's you're not getting like high RPMs, you're not gonna have any issues with expansion of it or anything. Um, and then, this is the DLC coating that is on the final product. So these other burrs are, are prototypes, they don't have the coating, but you do have the DLC uh, with these, which can increase lifespan, it reduces friction. This is not unknown, that I think the ZP6 from Easy Presso is the best for filter coffee as far as hand grinders go. And I think that before you hit diminishing returns, the fellow owed with the SSP multi-purpose burrs is the best electric grinder. So I did many, 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 many blind tests with these grinders together uh, while we were making these burr sets. And I've even had other people taste them as well. I'm gonna brew three at one time and then I'll put them into two cupping bowls each. So I have six on the table and we'll do a tasting to see what is what. Usually with the ZP6, I like between a five and a five and a half with Burlock at zero. On the Pietro, I typically like it around uh, eight to nine. I have it right in between eight and nine. And then on the Ode with Chirp at, uh, at the lowest setting, I have it set on seven. So they're all little different grind sizes, but it's because I think the best way is to let them all shine at what they do. and and then, then kind of taste it from there. O's on the bottom of the odes. We'll have a P on the bottom of the Pietros, and then we'll do a Z on the bottom of the ZP6. Which cup is the Pietro? We will cup all these bowls, so trigger warning. I'm gonna slurp, I'm gonna slurp. That was your trigger warning, by the way. This coffee's pretty good. 
the second one, I will chalk your finish. <laughs> now I'm gonna do some final checks. To... The thing about the cupping is, things get more apparent as they cool. So as I sit, the level's going down, it's getting cooler, it's getting a little easier. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I might have bit off more than I can chew. So these were very bright, very acidic, uh, but the flavors were pretty blended, uh, but in a very, very good way. Um, not like overly blended. Um, these right here, <laughs> I could be talking out my bum. These right here tasted more, um, they had nice clarity, but they also tasted like there was a little bit of astringency on the finish. That was the main reason I felt good about these is they both had a common astringency on the end. Um, and then these two tasted, um, like they had the high, probably the highest clarity. They did not taste astringent, and they had a bit more meat about it in the sense that um, it had a little bit more body almost. Maybe not body. Not necessarily body. They have a, a, a um, it's not that it's a heavier body, it's that it's maybe a, a smoother body. Um, these taste to be the clearest, like I could get most delineation of flavor in this cup. Obviously, I'm already thinking of which is which. I'm thinking this would be ZP6, this would be Odin, this would be Pietro. Z, ZP6. <sighs> Z, that's a ZP6. Okay, sick, sick, sick. I need to see O's here. Spaghetti-o! What is it, Hugo? It's an O. Yes! <laughs> Let's go on to espresso now. I'll be doing the J Max versus the Pietro. And uh, I think there have been enough comparisons with the J Max to other grinders that this is probably sufficient. Also, it's hard to pull a ton of shots and do side-by-sides, so I'm gonna just pull one of each. Because they look a little different, this one retained a little bit extra crema, I'm going to not look while I'm tasting. So, Ugo, if you want to switch these up, the one with the three is a Pietro. Both are very good. This one's a little bit more tart, like um, more of the acidity, more of the, I guess, fruitiness. This one has a little bit of a sweeter profile. So this one is the J Max. In this head to head, I do prefer the J Max just slightly. In my testing, there was there were gives and takes between the two. And then of course with other grinders I was using. I think that the multi-purpose burrs are more than sufficient in order to give you really nice coffee every day. Do I think it's a massive step up over a J Max or a Kinu? Absolutely not. I, I I just don't. I don't think the I don't really think it's giving you something that's massively superior to those in order to like ditch those if that's what you have currently. Um, I, I really enjoy, the, for instance, the Kinu's um, uh, sweetness. I think it comes out really nicely. So when I was contacted from Fiorenzato, they said we have something really new and really cool that we want you to be a part of. Considering there are no other marketed flat burr hand grinders, I was intrigued. Of course, there are flat burr hand grinders out there. Don't get me wrong. Um, most of them are horizontal. I believe this is the first vertical one, um, and I'm not sure any of them are have like a mass, like are, are in mass producing. So I know that there was one um, made by a guy who also made 98 millimeter grinders. He did 64 millimeter um, horizontally mounted flat burrs, but he, they char he charged like $900 or something for it. And then I know there are some on like AliExpress that you can get. They told me they were already far along in the project. They had already you know, made the design and things like that. I said, if I'm gonna be a part of it, I, I need to have a massive say like to where my fingerprints are all over the product. And so they flew me out to Treviso. Um, we, we met together, I talked with their team, I looked at the, what their methodology was, and then I saw the grinder and played around with it, and I had a lot of issues with it. And so I asked how they approached the creation of burrs, and considering they had a Master Sizer 3000 in their lab, I assumed that would be a big part of it, but it really wasn't. It seemed they were kind of just making burrs, and if it pulled nine bar shots, it was good. And so I was like, well, if I do this, I want to make a set of burrs. So they immediately decided we'll make two versions. We'll make like a pro brew set that you are in charge of, and then we'll make like the base set with the multi-purpose burrs. Initially, I was thinking we could use the 58 millimeter SSP burrs that Hansung already makes. But when you put in something made for a higher RPM uh, machine into something that's hand cranked, it doesn't really work out the way you would want it to. And so we kind of just started from scratch. I was very skeptical about this, and I pushed 
pushed back for a while, but they said, well, we make burgers in-house. We can literally make an iteration a day for as long as we need until we find something that you like. And so I sat down with the designer who was very reluctant to make the changes I was wanting and was arguing a lot with me. And it was kind of great because I love the pushback. And I was pushing back against a lot of things. One, they were saying it matches the curves of a lot of the hand, mark, hand grinders on the market. My pushback was, then why are you selling this? If you're just matching what's out there, there's no point in uh, saying this is something new, this is a revolution. You have to make something different, something that these cone burrs cannot provide. I was like, so the, one of the first steps I want to take in making the Pro Brew Burr is I want the most unimodal burr set on the market bar none. There's no um, proof sensorily with, with, a, with as an objective study as possible about the relation between particle size distribution and taste or sensory uh, experience. But I was like, if we're gonna do this, we have to lean into what flat burrs are known for, which is more unimodality. I kind of proved to them that there were better ways of doing things, and so uh, they implemented what I was wanting methodologically wise into the creation of this burr. So a couple of the big things that I was pushing was the feed rate of the burrs for the pro brew burrs, as well as kind of the finishing teeth and what that's supposed to look like. People who have helped on designing burrs or design burrs uh, postulate is what's causing what in the final cup. And so we went through many iterations, me and Luca went through many iterations, and in order to find what was kind of ideal for this filter brewing. So once we started to beat and get the most unimodal curves, I was like, all right, that's great, but we're not done. It needs to also win in the cup. Like we need to be able to get this on this chart, but also it needs to win and it needs to be the easy press okay, a ZP6, which they did not have to measure particle size. So they came out and visited me and out here in Porto. This one, my original hand grinder. They brought me the burr set that was beating all the other ones, and they were like, all right, let's try it. And on the table, it was winning. It was beating it. But I said, okay, but here's the deal. We need something objective. So take. I gave them my ZP6, said take this back, run it through uh, measurements against this burr set. They did, and it came back, and this is what it looks like right there. Boom. So. We were able to get a more unimodal curve than any of the cone burrs on the market. I, I, I haven't tried any, any flat burrs. I have not done like the Orphan uh, Ghost Burr one, but I do know Ghost Burrs produce a completely different cup than what I was kind of going for. But anyway, the Probe Burrs that I made do have the most unimodal of all the grinders I've tested, which I have a lot of hand grinders. So they applied some of that methodology to creating the multi-purpose bur burrs, which I believe makes them as good as they are. But you know, I, I wasn't a part of that process. Those could sell as good or as bad as possible. It doesn't really affect me. Um, the Pro Brew, Brew Burrs do. Honestly, this will be the last you really hear about uh, the Pietra from my, um, my platform because I don't want to bring it into comparisons because it's going to uh, skew uh, whatever I'm doing. People are going to immediately say, oh, but it's the Pietro, Lance gets money from that. So uh, he's obviously skewed to that. And, and the, 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 I guess there could be truth in that. But in the reality is I had full control over what the final look of this was. And I was able to opt out if I wasn't happy with it. And so this is something I'm willing to stake my burr reputation on. I think this is a fantastic filter grinder. I would say the ZP6 is to the Time More 078, which I think is one of the best filter grinders out there in my opinion, the same way that this relates to the EG1 with ultra low fines burrs. So that's kind of the flavor profile we're going after. With the ZP6, it gives you something more like the Time More 078, which I know not a lot of you have gotten to try, but uh, if you watch that video, I describe it in pretty good detail. And then this is more like something like the EG1 with ULFs. So it's not as blended, it's much more clear, and it won't be for everyone, I'll be honest, but it is definitely a pro brew set. It's something that you would have a great I'm cupping with, uh, filtering with, and honestly, if you get down to Burr Touch, you can do espresso. So you can get down fine enough to make espresso, no worries. And it's gonna give you something that you would expect from something with a, a low, low fine. So something similar to the ULFs, you're gonna have less body, you'll achieve higher clarity, You're gonna. it's gonna be more like a turbo shot style uh, burr grinder. It's gonna be even a little bit more intense than like the 64 millimeter multi-purpose burrs, obviously. The multi-purpose are definitely the preferred one for the majority. It's kind of like if you were to make espresso with, um, like with the J Max versus a K series, right? So the K series is going to be a lot more cleaner, a lot more clarity. It's it's not to this extent, obviously, but you get the idea. The J Max will give you more chocolates, etc. So that's kind of the Pietro breakdown. I hope this long video was worth watching, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I do have discount codes, I guess, with some resellers. So in the U.S., Espresso Parts has one, and I'll put in the caption below. And it's a 10% discount. And in Europe, the Godshot out of Belgium has a discount, and it will give you um, a free set of Lotus, which is the 
water company I co-founded uh, when you order the Pietro with the, with the Pro Brew Burst specifically. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I love to hang out there for a while once I post these videos, so let's chat down there. And then um, thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring. I think that's about it. So after this long, monstrous video, I hope that you brew something tasty. And cheers.